Hi everyone, Magdalena here with my good friend Marisa Snyder, who you might have seen in the past a number of times because we talked about essential oils and hormones a number of times. And I can't think of a better expert to go to when it comes to essential oils than Dr. Marisa. Hi there, girl. Hey, honey, how are you? It's so good to see you. So wonderful to be. I kind of feel like I'm in your home right now and it looks so cozy. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I've got the fireplace going, the snow outside. So, you know, gotta keep the house a little bit warmer. Um, and, um, you know, I don't know, like you've got this incredible energy going on in spite of being in a, in a book launch. Like how on earth do you do that? Girl, you know, it's those oils. No, it's, it's a lot of things. It's the self care, you know, so often we find ourselves in circumstances where we are, we are running on all cylinders and having those important habits in place have really helped me a lot during this time. Great. So we're going to be talking about a few different essential oils for different hormonal imbalances. I want to maybe focus on adrenals and menopause today, yeah. but if you have good, if you have good questions, then bring them on. We're going to be um, doing a giveaway of three blends that Marisa designed and your blends are amazing. And they're just using such high quality oils. Um, and uh, we're going to do that towards the end of the of the video. So do post some of the good questions that you might have observations. If you want to share something with us about essential oils, how they helped, helped you on your journey. And uh, in case you're not familiar with Dr. Marisa, um, she is an author of six books and the latest one that's just about to come out on the 12th of February is called the essential oils, uh, for hormone, uh, the hormone solution. Right. And really beautiful book on so many levels. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And we also have a masterclass that you can join um, so that you don't have to wait for the book to come out in February. You can just do that right away. Um, and um, you're very functional in your approach. That's one of the things I love. And, you know, there's really, apart from the fact that I'm completely biased because you're my friend, uh, but I try to filter that out as well because I do have friends that I would not invite for Facebook Live because I don't think they know as much as they think they do um, or I don't agree with their take on things. Uh, you have, number one, you're so well-researched in everything you do. And, and so, and, and really the book has got so many references. It's always like, it gives... Uh, me as a reader, the confidence that whatever is being, whatever I'm applying, there's, it's, 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 um, you know, it's really uh, grounded in science. And number two is I really don't know anyone who is uh, more knowledgeable in sexual oils in a very pragmatic way, uh, the way you are. So, so that's, um, that's, those are, that's what I w I'm going to share and um, bring on your questions. Um, just as we're going through the Facebook live, we're going to be Let's, uh, Marisa, why don't we just do the giveaway? For, because let's give a chance for people who are watching this late, right? And, um, and so maybe let's just do the giveaway like uh, towards the end of the weekend so Sounds that we can, we can figure yeah, out. Yeah, we can hold on. I love doing giveaways after the fact. That way, I know some of you who haven't jumped on yet, which yeah. is hello, hi. Um, that way we give you guys a couple of days to enter the giveaway. And I have put aside special blends for your community, Magdalena. They're already made. They're ready to go. And I can't wait to give them. We can't wait to give them away. Awesome. So, you know, so let's just start off with the fact that um, I, my pet peeve when it comes to essential oils is the fact that you have, and you know what I'm going to say, right? Because you already got that big cheeky smile on your face. Um, is that, you know, we get these emails from women saying, what's the one oil for my hot flashes? What's, what's the one oil for, like, I want to get pregnant. What oil should I use? Right. And it drives me crazy. Because this is somebody, oftentimes, this is coming from someone who is living a super stress, stressful life and uh, allowing the stress to rule, rule her life, lives off gluten, uh, caffeine is what really powers her throughout the day, right? And, <coughs> excuse me, it's highly inflamed. Um, but hey, you know, what's the eel that, what's the essential oil that I, I can reuse? And, and, the, and part of the problem with that is that, you know, we feel good about ourselves dropping uh, Rx, right? So prescription medication saying, I don't want to do that stuff on my migraine because that's going to mess up my liver. So I'm going to replace it with an oil. And that might not be a bad idea, except that you're going to really look at what's causing that migraine in the first place, right? So let's just start off with that. Can you just maybe address my pet's peeve and like something that really bugs the hell out of me, well, especially when people I see advertising, you know, on Facebook and all over since essential oils, like everybody's now doing essential oils. Um, and, and everybody seems to be doctoring uh, their community on how to use essential oil. So can you please address that? 
Yeah, absolutely. And I was just kind of joking around with you. You know, I, I would say, oh, yes, absolutely, Magdalena. There's a magic bullet for menopause and a magic bullet for fatigue and a magic bullet for pregnancy. Could you imagine if there was an oil that could just get somebody pregnant? That sounds like a dangerous proposition. You know, it, then you would, maybe someone would sabotage you with that oil and accidentally get you pregnant. Um, you know, the thing of it is, is although, you know, plant chemistry is really beautiful and it's very effective. I, how I personally love to leverage the use of essential oils is helping to create the lifestyle habits that we need, right? So helping, if you're struggling with sleep, how can we use oils in a ritual to help set you up with a bedtime ritual? Or if you are struggling with that midday slump, you know, instead of using caffeine and sugar, maybe you have a little oil blend and you step up and you, you walk around the, the office, you kind of get the blood pumping again, you use it to kind of get the body moving, you use it to kind of get the brain working so that you can reset the system a little bit. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I don't acquiesce to the, the one bullet technique because you and I both know that that's not how true healing happens because yeah. we've both been down that road. Yeah. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, um, what I promised our audience was I wrote on the, on the title that we're going to be talking about a little bit about adrenals and we're going to be talking about menopause and some of the symptoms. And for those of you guys who have a question about specific uh, applications of essential oils, why don't you pop that into the comments and then um, when we're doing it live, we'll just uh, go over those as well. So why don't we start off with the adrenal fatigue? Like what is it that, what essential oils can really help it? in conjunction, of course, with all the other things that we always talk about, like getting quality sleep, distress, distressing, doing breath work, uh, yeah. getting on a good diet. You know, for me, the adrenals are kind of the receiver of information. Um, and hey, Magdalena, you disappeared. I want to make sure you're still there. <laughs> Um, there you are. Okay. So you, they're the receivers of information where I really do feel where things kind of get lost or is where we're perceiving stress, right? Where we are being bombarded by everyday perceived stressors where your boss is on our case or we, we work all day and then we got to go take care of our family or, you know, the, a lot of those things kind of pop up or maybe we're late for a meeting and then we get stuck in traffic and it literally feels very stressful. And, and there's a relationship there between the inside of our limbic brain, that's kind of our survival center, the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and then they relay messages to the adrenals to say, hey, we need you to get to work. We got a message here where we got to survive. And then the adrenals go and do that work. And so one of the things that I really love studying about essential oils is really that chemistry and how when we breathe in an essential oil, so I have a, a I have a oil wild orange right here, orange essential oil, and we know that the limonene content and the monoterpenes in this blend or this oil, when we breathe it in, it goes straight into the limbic system. And an oil like wild orange, or even lavender, or a lang a lang, or even clary sage, we've seen countless research articles and. Um, case studies where when you breathe in that oil, you can actually calm down the stress response because mm. it's it's that communication process that I'm most concerned with. And when we, you know, the thing about our brain is that we're hardwired to kind of fall into loops. I remember when I was really stressed, it was really easy to set me off. I could, I would find myself stressed and stressed and stressed over and over again. I didn't really have a way of relaxing, but then I, I learned about oils and I was like, okay, well, if I create a, a, a ritual where maybe every hour, or every half hour, I breathe in lavender oil or lavender and bergamot together. And it disrupted that stress response. It disrupted the communication that I could actually reprogram the way that I responded to those external environments. So that that's by far, you know, when it comes to supporting the adrenals and supporting the stress levels, we can actually use aromatherapy to really calm down the mind, relax the mind, so we're not so easily triggered. Great. So, um, so what I'm hearing you say, it's orange, it's bergamot, right? Mm -hmm. um, what else, what else can we oh, use? Absolutely. What so what? the, the core five oils that have been researched to lower serum cortisol levels, so can help lower that stress response, help lower blood pressure, help lower the pulse point, which again, it's all a response to us thinking we're getting chased by a tiger, right? We need blood pumping if we've got to run. Yeah. So in order to kind of calm those processes down, the top five well-researched oils are lavender because of the linalool and the linalool acetate content, 
bergamot because of the limonene content, um, clary sage because of its phenol content, um, Roman chamomile, and we all know that chamomile is so calming. Um, so cam chamomile and all of the, the constituents in there. And then the last one I love is a lang a lang. Mm. Um, you're finding, you're going to see that a lot of those that I mentioned are florals. There are, it's usually the alcohols and the phenols in the florals that calm down the heart, that calm down the mind and relax the system. So great. So, so we've got these five oils. Now, how do we apply them? Great question. Is it, topical? So, is it for, um, you mentioned like inhaling it every hour or so. Mm -hmm. Is there any other, like, what, what's your recommendation? What are the options? So let's say, let's say you're getting in a car. And let's say you know you're running off. To, you're gonna you're gonna sit in LA traffic, right? Let's say you live in LA and you're about to, you're you're signed up for 45 minutes of bumper to bumper, or, and maybe you're not sure you're gonna make it to that meeting on time. That you really need to be there. Maybe it's for your daughter. Maybe it's for your son or something. You're concerned about that. I personally love to have a car diffuser in the car and you can get them on Amazon. You can get them anywhere. And I just preload that diffuser with a couple drops of lavender, a couple drops of bergamot, maybe a drop of Lang Lang. And you can even have that blend pre-made. Maybe it is like, this is my stress relief blend where it just relaxes me or my relaxation blend and start diffusing that in the car. Same with the office. If there's a boss who lights you up or maybe a coworker, have that blend going next to you, maybe sneak a diffuser underneath their, their um, office as well. Um, and then at home, you know, maybe you get home, you, you've just gotten done with a crazy day of work, you're walking into another scenario, or you're feeling really anxious, that kind of that like, oh my gosh, I got so much more to do. Um, Cause so often we feel like that as women, I, I'd love for you to make up a little roller. So I have a, what I call a stress reset blend. Do you mind if I share it? Sure, um, of course. So it is 10 drops of lavender. Cause again, we want that, that stress reset. Um, eight drops of frankincense and eight drops of wild orange. And every mm -hmm. one of those oils have been demonstrated in their own way to just calm the system. And what's so great about this blend is it smells beautiful. It smells delectable. It makes you happy. Top it off with fractionated coconut oil or grapeseed oil or Jehovah oil, whatever oil you prefer. And I love to roll it on my wrist. I love to roll it on my neck, on my temples, because, you know, we carry so much tension here yeah. and so much tension here. And then roll it on my palms and take some deep belly breaths and just give yourself that moment to reset. You know, I always say that self-care is really just giving yourself permission to pause. So if you have that oil, you can just you take a moment, step aside from whatever's going on and just allow yourself to have that de-stressing moment. Awesome. Um, there are some questions coming in. So okay. why don't we just take it off from there? Because I know there's going to be a lot of essentials always create a lot of questions from our yes. audience. Uh, let's see. We've got... Um, Mm -mm. Well, that information explains why I can get stressed so far these days, says yeah. Trudy. It is, um, it's a feedback loop. We just can constantly, it's like a little trigger, right? Once we hit it, it just fires so fast. And changing that is so important, disrupting that pattern. Yeah. Um, Jenny is saying, for me, it's all about the grounding oils, fir, um, pine, yeah. patchouli. I hate patchouli. I don't like Bataver, patchouli. frankincense, cedar. Yes, these lower my cortisol. I'm in menopause and these oils save me. Um, Liang Liang is way too sweet and smelly for me. Oh yeah. The grounding oils are awesome. The grounding. So, you know, we think about florals, which are great for relaxation. People resonate with florals, but some people resonate with the wood oils, cedar wood, white fir, Siberian fir, patchouli, sandalwood, vetiver, frankincense, um, Douglas fir, all of those, arbor vitae. Those are all gorgeous, gorgeous oils, spruce. Yeah. And I, you know, it's really finding what really resonates with your chemistry. And also yeah. when it comes to oils, you know, my blends, not only do I want them to be effective at helping to get you where you want to go, but I want them to smell good. No one wants to put on an oil that smells gross. And if you're not a patchouli person like Magdalena or I, guess what? You don't ever have to use patchouli, like not one time. And so I, I actually, I, I, we have a bottle. We've never used it because I'm not a fan. Um, and, but I own the bottle because I own a lot of oils. Um, but I have a lot of blends that can do the job without using patchouli. So that's good. So let's, um, 
yeah, and, and I think especially when, when stress is coming from like a place of anxiety and feeling very, very flighty, then these oils, it's anything that grounds you, right? Yes. So I think you just got to know yourself as a person as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm generally a very, very grounded person. So like these grounding oils sometimes are too grounding for me. And then I just kind of become boring. <laughs> You're so, never boring. Yeah, it's crazy. So I will do a lot of more like the floral ones because I just feel like that oh, they open me up uh, much more. So you're just going to play around with it and figure out your own uh, sweet spot. Suzanne is asking, is that true for men as well? I mean, I think for adrenals, that's Absolutely. definitely, right? Yeah. Absolutely. My husband, Alex, my husband resonates with the grounding oils, as you mentioned. He has a blend of spruce, frankincense, Siberian fir, I think a little bit of, of lavender, but he has that blend by his workstation at all times. And that's the blend he just really resonates with. When he's heading to sleep, he does love the florals. My husband, he loves himself some, some lavender oil. I'm not going to lie. So yeah, men, absolutely. Absolutely. Anyone who's struggling to, to kind of shut down that mental chatter before bed, again, it's about disrupting that pattern. And if you can just, and just the, again, it's the intention of even doing it too, that you're, that you're doing some of the work, you're turning off the electronics, you're, you're, you know, you, you have a blackout curtains to get out all the, yeah, get your the, magnesium um, levels fixed exactly. up, you know, these sure. sort of things, right? Yeah, exactly. There's multiple things that multiple tool sets to really set you up for that deep, restful sleep that yeah. we also desperately need. So you know how in the adrenals you talk, and by the way, guys, I, I see your questions coming in for menopause and perimenopause, and so we're going to get to this in just a second, but I just want to finish with the adrenals. Yes. So you know how you talk about, um, so you're talking about managing adrenals through really calming the nervous system, right? Yes. Is there any topical applications that we can support the adrenal glands itself by topical applications? There are. So there are, you know, just like all endocrine glands and just like all systems in the body, inflammation is definitely a concern or them being overworked is definitely a concern. You know, I think about the kind of the three-legged stool. We've got your thyroid, we've got the, the stress hormones, we've got the reproductive hormones, and each and every one of them play a role in that, in that situation. So there are oils that are great for the adrenals. Rosemary um, has been shown to not only, there's lots of benefits to rosemary, but particularly for endocrine glands, the um, rosemary is great for helping to kind of quell a little bit of just the overwork that the adrenals can have geranium so geranium mm -hmm. is also it's great for phase one detoxification in the liver it's it helps to get rid of some of those xenoestrogens just one of the properties of geranium but geranium is also very calming on the endocrine system so applying geranium applying rosemary applying frankincense directly to the adrenals can really be very nurturing for them mm -hmm. and would you approach them from the front or from the back from the back from the back yeah okay. which so just... may need a little bit of help getting back there right around yeah. you know lumbar are four above the kidneys. So you, maybe you have a partner or somebody in your house who applies a blend, um, on, um, oh, when you're going to sleep kind of as a massage, or you could even maybe do a detoxification bath with Epsom salts, magnesium salts, where you're using a couple of those oils to kind of just, oh, just work the whole body. Awesome. So let's talk about perimenopause and menopause since we have so many questions coming in. And then, and then we also have questions about estrogen dominance. Let, let me just pick up the first question. Somebody's asking, let me just see her um, name. Uh, Jenny is asking, helping with low estrogen, help, what to do for low estrogen, basically. Absolutely. So one of the things I would look at, and I'm clearly looking at stress levels, looking to see what's going on there, looking at the gut. I, you know, I think that where, you know, what some of my favorite research that I have looked into is the research that Magdalena does in terms of food, right, for helping to boost estrogen levels. Um, now, the oils that's most researched for helping to clean out receptor sites, ensuring that estrogen is binding in the right place is going to be clary sage. Mm. It's not a hormone. Remember, oils are not hormones. They're not DHEA. They're not testosterone. They're not estrogen. They're not um, progesterone, but they can help clear out receptor sites. They can help the binding of those receptor sites. And so clary sage would be that oil. Right. So, so just to be clear, I mean, clary sage is not going to help you elevate your estrogen levels, right? No, so this is where if you, if somebody is struggling with all that estrogen levels, really the, you're going to look at other solutions here, right? Whether it's, the, um, whether it's using things like flaxseed, whether it's going on a high anti-inflammatory diet so your mm -hmm. ovaries are able to produce sufficient estrogen. Mm -hmm. And then when, you, when we go into menopause, right, you start having things like hot flashes and whatnot. You know, the thing is that as women, it's normal for our estrogen levels to go down, period. I mean, we are not going to try to have our periods till we are 90. I mean, you know, you can, 
you can put your, yourself on so much of estrogen and progesterone to actually make that happen, but that's not the objective. The idea is to, even though we're going down in estrogen, is to feel, still feel pretty good, right? And I have found that um, you know, anything that you do as an anti-inflammatory uh, is going to help tremendously with menopause and perimenopause and hot flashes and those memory lapses and the belly fat around, uh, yes. around here. And, and as you said, Clary Sage is like, whatever estrogen is available to women, once those receptors are like clogged up, right? I mean, they, they are unclogged, if you will, um, then, then that, that is something that is, should, should really help. But again, you know, I would say the same thing, like, somebody who's struggling with hot flashes and low estrogen due to a low estrogen um, and just doing clary sage, um, you know, while living on coffee and cookies and doing or having a sluggish liver. Thing. Yeah. And, and, right. And your, and your liver is messed up because you're just like coffee, you know, coffee, caffeine junkie and processed foods. I'm sorry to say it's only going to go that far. Right. Yeah. So- it's only going to go so far. Right. So we got to look at the liver. We got to look at the gut. We got to look at stress levels. You know, I always think when you see some of the research coming out with menopause and perimenopause, you, we're designed, like you said, Magdalena, we're naturally designed to decrease those hormones. And if the body is not gunked up or toxic, and if we've got a good lifestyle in place, we really kind of sachet through that period of of our life without a lot of symptomology, where we're seeing that women are really struggling with menopause and with the symptoms of menopause are chronic stress levels, because we're we're stealing from our from those from the, the kind of the very last reserves we have for our adrenals. We've got liver clogged liver, we've got toxicity, and we've got some gut issues. So I always want women, you know, to look at all those things, you know, a lot of the women are asking, well, does your book give me menopause protocols? And I'm like, well, do you mean, does the book have some liver detoxification practices? Does the book help to clean the gut? Does the book work on brain fog, you know, helping with cognitive function? Because those are the things I think we're really worried about. Then yes, it does. But is there, do I have a magic menopause blend? Unfortunately, I don't. Um, not not when you don't do all the other pieces, because you're yeah. still gonna find yourself back at square one, even even if you're using the blend. Right. Awesome. And you know, for this, I think there's a lot of people in our community who have already been doing a lot of really amazing work. Like they got on the elimination diet, they've done my cooking program, they bought the book, they've worked on their liver, and it's just like you know, just adding on another la- layer to your protocol. And that's it's, I think that's where essential oils can really do absolute wonders. Um, how, let's talk a little bit about applications of Clary Sage. Like how would you, how would you use it? So I love, I mean, not to say that Clary Sage on its own could be beneficial because I think it can, I call it the Beyonce of hormone essential oils. Um, but I love it in a blend. I think that it it really works well, well in a synergistic blend. So I have a superwoman blend that one of our giveaways, which we're going to do later down the road, we're going to do the giveaways, but I wanted to just give the recipe. And I have a lot of women using it in perimenopause and menopause. I love topical application for this oil and for these blends um, because you can apply them. Remember, oils are lipophilic, so they are fat loving. They absorb into the skin's tissue. I love it on the bottom of the feet. I love it directly over the ovaries. I love it on the arms um, right here where it can, you can smell it and enjoy it. And so this blend, um, it leads with clary sage, but clary sage can also work very synergistically with these other oils to get you the result you want. So it's 12 drops of clary sage, 10 drops of lavender, five drops of geranium, because again, geranium also clears out the receptor size. It supports the hormones. It helps with the adrenals. So we've got multiple oils doing different things here. Um, five drops of cedar wood, which is very calming and relaxing. And then um, we've got the four drops of a lang -lang that has been shown to help boost testosterone levels and just help to to support the heart. It's a libido booster. So women love that as well. And that blend, like I mentioned, it's just applying it to the arms, the wrists, the ovaries, um, whatever really feels good for you and can help with that hormone support on top of the other things that you're doing. Great. Um, and so for those of you who are joining us a little bit late, we're doing the giveaway with three blends that Marissa has formulated. Yes. Um, and uh, you use such good quality oils. You know, the last time we saw each other, you gave me this essential oil blend for my skin. And oh my God, my skin so loved it. It was so, it was Yay. so, so good. It was, it was some. Oh, that was a potent blend. I'm so happy I had it. Just, I was just like, oh my God, just two drops. I should have just taken one because it's so expensive, these oils. 
uh, the two of them. Yeah, that 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 blend was. (laughs) My skin was just like, give me more. Like, I just ate it all up. So it was great. Um, Let's. uh, So Marisa is also offering a masterclass in the run up to her book. And for those of you who are joining us late, uh, the essential oils hormone solution is uh, coming out in February. Now, you don't have to wait till February till it comes out, although I think supporting her and getting that on Amazon as a pre-order would be wonderful. So don't wait for that. It's one of the things that really helps us authors is to get the book um, pre-ordered as much as possible because the more of a momentum we get at that point, the more the publisher and media is willing to to talk about the book and the more women um, are gonna get the book into their hands. So if you can help out with that, we really, really appreciate it. Um, But if you don't wanna wait for the book, and when you order the book and the second thing you can do, so you don't have to wait for it to arrive um, at your door on the 12th of February, doing the masterclass. And so can you tell us a little bit more about what the masterclass is about? Absolutely. So Magdalene, I had the opportunity to survey around 10,000 women, about nine to 10,000 women. And I just wanted to know, I went on to understand what were some of the core concerns that they were having? What were things that that were coming up every single day that they were just like, I am over this. I need some solutions. Um, So fatigue was a big one. Stress was a big one. Um, You know, that belly fat, the weight gain that we can't seem to get rid of and we don't understand what's going on with our bodies. Brain fog was another one. And so what I did is I wanted to create a masterclass that really provided women solutions and an understanding as to what is going on. So this three-part masterclass series really dives into some of those big concerns, provides solutions, gives the self-care rituals that really support that, talks about a little bit. We have a little essential oil conversations going on in there, but really I think it's important to understand why why that's happening in the body and what we can do about it. So that's what the masterclass is about. It's just three videos. They're about 10 to 12 minutes long a piece. They're really beautiful. And I know that you guys are going to get so much out of them. It was fun to curate those over the summer. Great. And I posted the link under the video. So you guys just look it up and uh, it's basically bitly.com EO slash masterclass. But nobody ever pays attention to a URL. So just click on it. It's right there. (laughs) Um, So I'm just going to look at some of the questions that we have coming in. Sure. Um, There is um, an interesting one that says, and Angela is asking, what about frankincense and copaiba for estrogen receptor positive breast cancer? In terms of supporting it or read they've seen research against it? I'm just curious. So I haven't necessarily seen research against them. Um, You know, frankincense is used and there's a lot of research. I'll be honest with you. I haven't done as much research into frankincense and cancer as I have done with frankincense and depression or frankincense and cognitive function. Um, I just lost my grandfather last weekend to pancreatic cancer. Oh, wow. But he had pancreatic cancer for five years. And one of his one of the oils that we used to support him, because he was on chemo the whole time, was was frankincense. And you know, my grandma and my grandfather, you know, are convinced that that did play a role in helping to support his cellular function when he was in treatment. And you know what? The average person who gets pancreatic cancer, you know, the two years, two years is usually the max amount of time. But my grandfather made it five years. They went on major trips, they had amazing experiences, they went on vacations. So mm-hmm. he really had this beautiful life in those five years and um they're they were so grateful that they had oils as one piece you know my grandfather he drank his green smoothies he did his supplements but he had his oils too and um i think when you combine a lot of tools to help support the body on a cellular level you really do give yourself a fighting chance yeah and you know just on the on the uh, estrogen receptor positive breast cancer um i would also say that angela there is hell of a lot more that you can do than just frankincense and copaiba. Um, yes. Copaiba. And, um, and so if you're not familiar with my work, then just head over to hormonesbalance.com. And there is a ton of resources on estrogen dominance, which is the leading cause on that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think hit up those action points and then use essential oils as a sort of a nice add on, but not as a, the only thing to rely not, on. No, definitely not. Yes. Yeah. Um, and there's also a genetic component to that as well. If you, if you have, you know, the funds, then go look into genetic testing and see whether you have all the, um, all the, uh, you know, gene um, mutations for being a very slow estrogen metabolizer. And I certainly am. I have. Um, it's it's pretty, it's pretty daunting. But you know what? I don't even have breast lumps. Uh, so it's like if you manage it properly, you can totally avoid it. 
Let's, uh, Trudy is asking, can you address liver stress and thyroid all at once or should we work on one at a time? I think that they should be addressed all at once. I don't necessarily think that we should separate them. Um, as, a, as a person, you know, along with Magdalena, who's dealt with Hajimoto's thyroiditis, I was absolutely interested in getting my liver back on track as well as supporting my thyroid as well. So I don't necessarily think you need to separate them. And I think when you're doing a lot of the right foods, you're making a lot of the right changes, you're going to have a profound impact on both systems, whether you like it or not. You know, what you're doing for your liver is also going to help your thyroid and it's going to yeah. help your gut. So I, I think that it's all interconnected. Is there any, um, is there any essential oil that you like to use topically on the thyroid itself? I do. So there is research. Um, again, what we're looking for more importantly is the cellular function, right? Making sure that we're quelling inflammation, that we're getting the immune system work properly. You know, we talk a lot about frankincense. Frankincense is definitely on that list for me. Um, I have a thyroid support blend that um, you can apply to the bottom of the feet, or you can apply to the, to the throat. Um, if you, to the thyroid area, basically trying to see if I have it in front of me right now, because I, um, I do share it often. I just shared it a couple of days ago. I'm sorry. I'm putting you on the spot, but I, I know you're gonna, I, I just want to make sure it. I have it right. You know, I always love to make sure that I, I get, I want to make sure the blends hundred percent. I'm like, is that seven drops or six drops? What was it? Um, and it doesn't have to be an exact science. I don't want you guys to think like, oh my gosh, if I don't get this exact blend right, it's not going to serve me. That's not true either, but I have done a good amount of research and I always want you to feel really confident using what I recommend. So my thyroid support blend, I have it right here. Okay. So again, in a 10 mil roller, oops, 10 mil roller like this, cause it's just the easiest way. Um, it's going to be eight drops of lemongrass. And what we love about lemongrass, it's a circulatory oil. It helps to support the immune system. Um, so it's got really powerful benefits there. Five drops of frankincense, again, for the cellular support and anti-inflammation. Five drops of myrrh. And myrrh helps to reprogram a lot of what's going on inside of the nucleus and in our DNA. It's great for the thyroid eight drops of lavender for the calming effect on the immune system and five drops of clove because clove is a powerful antioxidant. We really want that antioxidant support. Top it off with fractionated coconut oil or Jehovah oil, and then you can roll it on the thyroid. I would say just morning and night or even just evening um, when your body's in that healing process or if the thyroid's too delicate for you, you can always apply it to the bottom of the feet. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, we've got somebody sharing, Gabriella is sharing some, uh, well, uh, this is actually, this is, uh, somebody shared just now, let me just look for this. Uh, she basically said that, um, infusing or diffusing lavender oil give, gives her racing thoughts and hearts. Hmm. You know, it's really, it's a good thing to know what oils, um, kind of change and shift you. And I hear that, you know, one of my favorite sedative oils and, and neurological tonic oils is vetiver and vetiver can re like my husband diffusing vetiver, like he just, blah, 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 he just falls asleep, like literally in the middle of talking to me. But then I have a dear friend, a good friend of ours, Bridget Danner, who uses vetiver and it immediately wakes her up and has her on the go. So I yeah. think it's important to know what, what chemistry works for you. You know, the thing about lavender, we all think it's just, just really beautiful, foofy, calming oil, but lavender is a very, very powerful, very potent essential oil with powerful chemistry. You know, in Europe, it's one of the most recommended um, solutions for anxiety, but then for other people, it just, it not, it may not be the oil for you. So I just say it's really important to kind of study oils for your own chemistry. Me, lavender is extremely calming. Um, and there are oils that are not like, for instance, I think wild orange is one of the most beautiful, energizing, happy, boosting oils. And I have a friend who uses it for sleep every night. I haven't, I mean, oh, wow. I would never use it for sleep. It's not, I, I look at her, I'm like, what sleep? Really? No. Like that's my get up and go oil again. So if, if, if indeed lavender is, is doing that for you, I would sub out another floral like geranium or Roman chamomile or jasmine. Any of those mm -hmm. oils would work neroli um, as an option. So just playing with them, figuring out what works best for you. Awesome. Gabriella is asking some people say to avoid lavender oil during menopause. Is that true? No, not at all. Okay. I can't. Yeah, I have no idea why that would be the case. There was, you know, I have to say there is a there is a few publications out there, um, including one company that sells progesterone oil that attaches a, a pamphlet 
that has done so much of the service to women, including saying that lavender oil is making boys having grow boobs and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I can see you already cringing, right? And, and this is just an oils. Wait till you see all the food recommendations. She's basically, oh, man. you can just go and drive yourself completely crazy and might as well, you know, jump off a cliff um, based on these recommendations. So I think yeah. it's bottom line yeah. is it's really important to know who you're going to for advice for and where you're getting, where you're reading your advice from. You know, it's also on the same note, like people, like I know there's a lot of research on frankincense, right? And, you know, and so there's like this whole movement of frankincense for cancer, right? Right. And it's great, but then hold on, but what else are you doing, right? Like yes. what dietary changes have you made? What relationships have you changed, right? Including yourself, right? How much stress is there? Like what's the pH of your body? I mean, there's so much more that goes into managing serious conditions like that than just saying frankincense is going to answer all my questions, right? It's going to take care of all my problems. It's going to take cancer away. Drives me crazy. But so really just be careful where you're getting inf information from. Absolutely. Um, and you're gonna see a lot of fear. I mean, something that's very clickbaitable is gonna become very popular. And even though the, the, that particular horribly done research article um, just completely got debunked so many years ago, it keeps resurfacing. But the thing is, is what's really intriguing to me is a lot of pediatricians and doctors are telling their patients this. And I'm like, that is such a disservice that they didn't really dig into the research. They just saw this random weird article Hey, can we actually truth. talk about this? Because yeah. this is sort of interesting. Because I remember, I remember calling you or yeah. reaching out to you when I saw that pamphlet saying lavender oil is making boy a man grow boobs. I was like, what? Right. And so I emailed you, and you gave me. A, can you just talk about that? Absolutely. So what was really interesting, what they had done is they had taken this lotion. It was, and they had tried to isolate. They thought that it was they were isolating. Um, melaleuca I think it was tea tree and, and lavender because they saw that the boys that were using this lotion or the shampoo were were seeing estrogenic effects um, and they were looking at it and they were like well it must be it must be this lavender and melaleuca um, and what we're finding is that you look back at those that ingredients and we see that there were a lot of phthalates there were a lot of parabens there were a lot of endocrine disrupting xenoestrogens inside of this lotion and this conditioner that the boys were using it wasn't the oils it was it was the the product the all of the the endocrine disrupting and so when we look at we look at actually what what melaleuca and lavender do they, they don't have estrogenic properties. They, you know, and lavender has been known to clean up receptor sites, but that's as far as it goes. Right. And also the other thing is, I, the other question that, you know, comes to mind is that what was the source of that essential oil in the first place? Was it synthetic or was it like truly natural coming no, from they, they the were they were totally synthetic. So often when you see in a grocery store, and this was in, this is in South America. So I don't know the quality of which it was um, that they were running this study. Cause they saw this in a bunch of little, they saw this in a bunch of boys all at once. Um, and yeah, nothing about that product was real. Like not one thing, not the oils, not the yeah. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Maureen Nelson is asking, I ingest, well, she's saying she ingests oils and Angela is asking, uh, can I ingest my oils if they are pure? Mm, great question. So I, I am on the more conservative um, side of things when it comes to ingesting essential oils. I think that there really needs to be a targeted approach for it. I don't necessarily know if people just need to be drinking oils all the time. And the reason for this is, <laughs> is number one, ingesting takes a minute. You know, in order to get it through the system, get it through the digestive system, go into the um, absorb into the small intestine, we're talking about 45, sec 45 minutes upon consuming. And if it's really something that you want to work on right then and there, the faster way is topical or aromatic. You know, not only is aromatic going to go into the brain to the limbic system, because that's just the way our sense of smell works, but by breathing them in, it goes into the, it goes through the alveoli and straight into the bloodstream as well. So I find that aromatic and topical is faster and more effective, but let's say it is something digestive. Let's say you're struggling with something digestive, or maybe, maybe you're dealing with like, I know a lot of people right now are taking little turmeric capsules for, for liver detoxification. And you know what, if you're being very specific for a specific reason and you're, you're being mindful about what you're doing, 
I think it's okay, but just, I want it to be targeted. I want there to be a reason why you're choosing that. Now, and we love, we cook with oils all the time. We love to cook with our oils to kind of add a little flavor to things, but I'm just not drinking oils 24 seven. I don't necessarily know if that's a great idea. We can disrupt the mucous membranes inside of the esophageal area if we're doing too much of that. Um, it takes a lot to disrupt the esophageal mucosa, but it can happen. Okay. Uh, you know, one of the big questions I know we're going to get, it's not coming up right now, but I know it's going to happen. It's just a matter of uh, time and we're going to get those emails uh, from people. And that is um, how do, without it being any brand specific, um, what, uh, what would be your recommendation in terms of how do we know, what do we look for when we select an essential oil company that we want to trust? Yes, such a great question. You know, oils before they're oils, they're plants. And I think just like the kind of plants that we put into our bodies, the kale, the spinach, the carrots, the blueberries, you want to really be mindful that they're not genetically modified, that they've not been sprayed with pesticides and herbicides, that they're actually, they actually have the vitamins and the minerals and the polyphenols and the antioxidants that we're looking for. Same with these plants, these, the turmeric root, you know, it's being grown in the ground. So it's vetiver. Lavender is being grown in gorgeous lavender fields. And so, but there are specific places where these oils need to be grown. So for instance, tea tree grows really only in Australia. Um, sandalwood really only grows in India and Hawaii. Um, you know, Douglas fir grows here and grows in New Zealand. And so we look at that and we, it's important to know, okay, where are these oils coming from? How, how are these, how are the farmers growing them? So there should be some information online at the company about the practices, about the farmers, just giving you insight into where these oils come from, that there's a lot of care and consideration around the oils. Also, it's important that you look into the company and see the type of testing that they're doing. At bare minimum, microbial testing, um, gas chromography, mass spectrometry, chirality testing, these are, these are the standard must have um, protocols for testing well, essential oils. Would they publish that on their website? They, well, you know what, if I was spending that kind of money to test my oils, best believe I would, you okay. know, it's, it's not cheap. Um, and and then most importantly, maybe the companies do it, or maybe they have a third party company that tests their oils. And I think that's the most important looking mm -hmm. for a company that does third party testing, or at least has testing facilities. And in, in, in gold standard is that every oil has a batch number or a lot number that you can track the, the oil and, and the type of testing we're in also. So for instance, I want to, um, so frankincense is a great example. We talk a lot about frankincense. What I'm looking for from frankincense is I want at least a 35% monoterpene content. When it's sandalwood and myrrh, I'm looking for 60% or higher sequiterpene content. For lavender, 70% linalool acetate content. Um, wild orange, 85 to 90% limonene content. So if I'm not seeing those numbers, I know it's not the oil that I want. And how would you know? How would you know the um, the 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 percentage of the content? That could be a little. That requires a little bit more digging. That requires a little bit more information. I do have some of that information inside of the Smart Moms Guide book because that's exactly what that book was for to really give you the 101, to really have you understand where to get the oils and to under and let you know this is the type of of chemistry that you're really looking for in that oil. So, and I also in the Smart Moms Guide I list where the where the where the plants are grown. So that you can say, okay, I know where the plants are supposed to be grown for this particular essential oil. So, you know, it, it kind of goes back to the same principle that I always use. Like whenever I'm buying something from a company I'm not really sure about, it's like the more they're willing to disclose or the more they're willing to provide you information with when you email them and ask them, um, the more trusting I can be t towards mm -hmm. them, right? And and generally that's the, you know, I think that's generally the the... The behavior, if you will, that I've noticed is that they will tell you about like the information that you mentioned, um, their practices and just not being secretive about anything. Right. Um, so I think that's just a big part of it. I want to give you an example of um, of that. I'm just going to you know what I'm going to do. I'm oh, gonna... yes. Come here. Come here. Is, he, right. up? is he up from his way, everybody? So this is the new addition to my household. This is Charlie oh. and uh, Charlie is sleeping right now. So he's behaving <laughs> really well. 
Um, he's a terrier, he's a Westie. So this is a white Scotland terrier. And, you know, I had a, I, I really had a hard time deciding if I want to do a rescuer or breeder. And I, d I ended up doing a, from a breeder, but it was the same thing. You know, it's just the comfort that you feel from, from looking at a website and how much information are they willing to share, right? And so Charlie is his name. Charlie's going to be picking uh, the three ladies are going to be getting the bland from, uh, from us. And we're going to wait till Sunday. Today's Thursday. We're going to wait till Sunday to announce. And he's just yawning and yawning. Look so I'm at gonna him. Put him down. Look how so cute he is. Hey, Charlie. He's still a baby. So adorable. I can't wait to come visit and he's meet Charlie. He's only two months old. Yeah, oh he's goodness. super social. So I lucked out with this dog. He's, he's awesome. He makes me so, I tell you, you know, he makes me just laugh out loud. Um, yeah, I haven't laughed like this in a long time, just at home by myself. So, <laughs> all right, everyone. Um, really awesome talking to you. Always, as, as always, such a well of information. Um, would you have the time to pop over later, maybe closer to the weekend or over the weekend and take a look at the questions? Absolutely. And I've in. got some, you know, I've got more blends that I can share. I know so many of you guys are struggling with brain fog and cognitive function and there are oils. You know, I love rosemary for its 1-8 cinnalol content that has been shown in multiple studies to boost working memory when you really want it at that moment by simply breathing in rosemary. So I've got a lot of little blends like that, that again, can be utilized. You know, brain fog is also driven by gut, driven by thyroid, driven by adrenals. And so it's a, it's a multiple step approach, but at least you have something that can just really help you get through those emergency moments so i can come in and pop in and share some blends answer some questions absolutely are you sharing some recipes in the master class i am i am definitely sharing recipes in the master class so you're oh. yes we'll have those in there awesome so those of you who are joining late the book is coming out in 12th of february you can pre-order that on amazon right now the essential oils a hormone solution by dr marissa snyder and um don't if you don't want to wait for the book to come out do the master class hop on on that that's going to be, um, that's going to be really awesome. And, you know, I always appreciate the depth of your content. And so this is something that's going to benefit. And the masterclass specifically for you, so I think you said fatigue, cravings, and hormonal balance, correct? That's correct. Yes. Sort of three, three major things, which is like, tell me who does not deal with that. Right. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say, I'm so impressed with like your bouncy energy. Like, I don't know how much coffee you had before this call, but, <laughs> but you're like very energetic given that you are in the midst of your book launch and, you know, having done a book launch April last year, it was just, I know how much it just sucks life out of you. People have no idea. They'll be like, Oh, every, I, every time I'm on Facebook, I see you everywhere. And like, I'm on, I listen to the podcast. You are everywhere. Like, yeah, but you know, that's just incredible amount of work, right? It so. is, it is. And it's, I, I will say that little extra boost, I'm putting on oils before I come on. Um, my little instant energy blend is just a drop of peppermint, a drop of wild orange, rub your palms together. I have it made up in a big vat. You know, just a little bit, just kind of, you know, I love peppermint because it oxygenates the lungs. It just opens things up. And when you have more oxygen, your mitochondria are working better. And ultimately that's what matters. Your mitochondria, that's what you need to have working. And so that little boost kind of definitely helps you for a Facebook Live. <laughs> awesome. All right, everybody, get, um, wishing you a lovely weekend. And um, get it, get on, jump on board with a couple of those um, essential oils that Marissa shared. Many of you have been asking about liver and, again, about estrogen. We already covered all of those. So just when we hang out, there's going to be a replay available. So go back and listen to the beginning of the video. All right, everybody, have a wonderful Friday coming up and an amazing weekend. Try some oils. Uh, join the master class and uh, Marissa, I will, I hope to see you soon. Absolutely. I look forward to seeing you too, honey. Bye. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.